baskets up the wazoo here. Different body shapes and whole distribution patterns and whole sizes. Do you prefer ridgeless or ridged? Straight or curved sides? Square or rounded corners? Polished or plain surfaces? Flat or concave bottoms? A wide filter area or a narrow one? And what about these coatings we hear about like nanotech quartz and the like? What does it all mean? Last time we looked at quality, at manufacturing care under the microscope and found that the well-known premium brands are all nicely made. Today I want to look at other variables and I want to boil it down to a few basic features that you should consider. One caveat, I would say that the effects of these differences on flavor are subtle and can easily be overridden by more influential variables like grit size and water temperature and overall contact time. But I can show you some consistent real world differences in how the shots pull. So for what it's worth, let's see which basket and shower screen combo might suit you best. Oh. My. God. It's like a miracle. For overall shape, there are a few options. Ridgeless baskets usually have straight sides with a large filter area relative to their rim diameter, which encourages a more uniform vertical flow involving all areas of the puck more or less equally. The water travels in largely vertical paths and exits directly, flowing in an orderly manner, and supposedly this yields a more even extraction, a phrase that really rings a bell for a lot of people. One clear benefit of ridgeless, straight, and square, you get a really nice tight puck that knocks out easily. Ridged baskets are often tapered with a filter area that's narrow relative to the rim diameter and sometimes fewer holes per square inch, which causes some of the water to wander farther in search of an exit, especially from the outside toward the center. This increases turbulence and contact time, but not by the same amount everywhere. Water moves through the coffee more chaotically in a tapered basket. Whenever different areas of the puck experience different conditions, a variety of extraction profiles will occur together, contributing toward a more complex and interesting flavor. Yes, that's right. Uneven extraction is a potentially good thing. Within reason, of course. Hole size generally will be around three-tenths of a millimeter, which allows the passage of microfines and adds to the perception of richness and body. This is pretty much the industry standard that we're all accustomed to. You can get smaller ones. IMS makes a line with 0.17 millimeter diameter holes, which excludes the microfines, leading to a pure acidic flavor, if you like that sort of thing. I don't know about you, but when I'm in the mood for something lighter and sharper, I reach for my V60. Hole shape is usually either cylindrical or conical. It's said that conical holes are less inclined to clog. Spacing and layout patterns are also variable, often changing according to basket capacity to compensate for differences in the puck's thickness while maintaining a characteristic flavor profile. On the other hand, when two baskets are the same shape and size, altering the whole pattern can alter the flavor subtly. Filter surface shape is also variable. A more convex bottom favors long, variable paths toward the center, even in a ridgeless, straight-sided basket like this. A flat bottom like this one tends to maintain the water's vertical pathway. Often, a flat filter will stretch into a convex shape under normal pressure, which is a feature, not a bug. This is engineered into the baskets. It's not a defect that no one has yet figured out how to fix. You can pay hundreds of dollars to disable this feature if you like. I'm going to talk about that in a bit while we look at some shot performance. First, I have a ridgeless square basket paired with a fully perforated shower screen, both from E&B Lab, both with a non-stick quartz coating that makes them easy to clean. The basket is minimally tapered and flat-bottomed, so the filter area is nearly as large as the rim area. 
the shower is perforated above the entire surface, so we should get very uniform movement of water through the coffee with this combination. I'm going for a leisurely pre-infusion between 2 and 4 bar and a quick ramp up to 9 bar. I'm hoping for a platonic ideal here, something evenly saturated and fully optimized according to the design theology behind the Weber Workshop's $360 Unifilter and $175 Unibasket. They've carried the flat square ideal to its logical conclusion with rigid, heavy stainless and a filter that uniformly covers the entire bottom with perforations and virtually no taper. These heavy-duty baskets never bulge under pressure, so the coffee follows several straight vertical paths out, which they call a syrup rain, to achieve a truly even extraction. When the bottom of an ordinary flat basket bulges under pressure, it causes the fluid to converge in the center, creating what they call a rat's tail, an infallible sign of ruined coffee, and some really subtle marketing language there. Here's the so-called syrup rain that Weber talks about. The pressure is quite low now. I'll ramp up, and, well, I can't seem to avoid that dreaded rat's tail, presumably because my basket is too lightly built. But the shot looks pretty good to me. No hint of channeling, no under-involved areas on the basket surface. The mousse looks pretty good, too. In any case, this is the idea behind the straight flat basket. Weber takes it farther than ENB Lab, but you get the idea. Now let's head in the opposite direction, using a tapered basket with rounded corners, featuring a narrow area of perforation and a shower screen with a blank center that will fill the outer area preferentially to enhance the tendency of the water to interact with the coffee particles more chaotically and with more kinetic energy. These items are both from the IMS competition line. Here we're following the design principles behind Wayfo's $200 blend basket, which eliminates a good deal of the perforated surface and even changes the size and shape of the perforations to maximize the chaos and intentionally prevent even extraction. They emphasize that the filter surface is not flat, but is designed to bulge under pressure. They say it's similar to the IMS competition basket, which we're using. Understand that if Weber's claims about what makes coffee taste better are true, then wafos have got to be false, and vice versa. Or, and this is what I believe, if you can make perfectly good coffee with either type, then these differences have got to be inconsequential. A lot of the liquid moves laterally, just as it would in the wafo. This should give us more friction and kinetic energy to aid in extraction with areas of varied conditions for a more complex flavor, ideally. There's no hint of channeling, no under-involved areas. Technically, mechanically, the shot looks perfect. The mousse definitely looks better this time, and I think that might indicate that the extraction was a bit more forceful, although the coffee, dose, grinder setting, flow, and pressure profile, and all espresso machine settings remained unchanged. Only the basket and shower screen are different. So, we have a noticeable and repeatable mechanical difference. But does this coffee taste noticeably better? No, it doesn't. It tastes fine, the other shot tasted fine. And if I wanted more mousse on the first example, I would increase the dose a little bit and grind a hair finer. And I would get pretty much the same result. Intuitively, it would seem that a tapered basket probably aids extraction by contributing kinetic energy to the fluid interacting with the coffee grit, but it can't give you perfectly even extraction. I'm unwilling to spend hundreds of bucks on the Wayfo and Weber parts, but this channel's good friend, Lance Hedrick, has been planning to evaluate them, so I'll refer you to his video for some real-world results. But I'll make a prediction. If two companies can make contradictory claims and still produce baskets that make decent coffee, then those differences cannot be terribly important. 
If you have a good quality basket, it's going to do its job. There may be some subtle differences here and there, but they're not limiting, so don't sweat it. I'm sure you've seen YouTube demonstrations like this. People will run water through with the system wide open. They'll look at the pattern of drops and attempt to read it somehow. But this is noise, not information. Anyone who speculates about design differences based on this doesn't understand what they're looking at. The behavior of flowing water is radically different when it's confined and under pressure. Surface tension and screen type and materials and hole sizes will affect the appearance of the unpressurized water drops in ways that simply don't track with the screen's actual performance when it's under pressure in a semi-closed system. Looking at this could be helpful if something is really out of whack. Something obviously lopsided like this, I would investigate further, certainly. But for the most part, this isn't telling you anything. Poor quality parts can give you trouble, but good enough really is good enough. Your choice of baskets and screens is best decided by practical concerns. Workflow efficiency, ease of maintenance, tidiness, issues like those. Before I go, I want to show you how clean my machine is after running about 5 kilos of coffee through it. Why should that be interesting? Because I have not used any detergents or descalers. I flush it with plain water only. I'm working on a video explaining how to keep your machine immaculate with zero chemicals and why you should want to. If you have hard water, you will have to filter, and I will explain that in some detail. I don't like chemical cleaners because they can remove the oxide layer that forms on copper and brass, which protects us from the lead that all brass contains, and some can attack your stainless steel boiler's thin passive layer of chromium oxide. If you don't know about depassivation, don't worry, I'll explain that too. So, keep in touch. Cheers!